So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about data collection. We're going to talk about some ways you can collect different, different types of data. We're also going to be talking about some problems that you might have when you collect data and some things that you need to be looking for. Now remember, in this section, you're not only going to be just build, finding information and reading, and reading mean, median, and mode. You're going to have to look at some data and see if there are issues or problems. How do you think the data was collected? What do you think would be the best way to collect data? So pay attention today in these, with, when we look at these different things. So most of it is just going to be lists of terms, okay, and definitions. So we'll be talking about those, but then we're going to look at some questions about how you can use that information. Yeah? So here we go. All right. So for any statistical problem, you have what's called a target population. You need to know this. It's not super important that you know exactly the definite definition. But the target population is just the group of things or people that we're interested in finding information about. Make sense? For example, I wouldn't go and ask you guys what kind of car you drove. Wouldn't make any sense, right? But I could go and ask your parents what kind of car you drive, yeah? So your target population is the, is the population that you're interested in getting information about, okay? So it has to fit the question that you're asking. If, you're, if you ask the wrong group, you're not gonna get any you get any good answers, right? Okay. So target population. Target population. Shh, target population is simply the th group of things or people that you're interested in finding information about. For example, we may want to know the colors of cats in a particular pet store or the ages of people living in South Africa. Whatever. Doesn't matter what kind of information. Now, when we collect the data. There are a couple of different ways you can do that, and we're going to look at both of them. You can use, and we're going to talk about the first one first, we can use what's called a census. And a census simply means collecting data about every individual in the target population. There you go. All right. So when you're dealing with a census, it's very difficult to actually talk to everyone in the population unless that population is fairly small. Now, you can give it a shot, but it's pretty hard to do, okay? But you could do it if you have small populations. Now, if you have a very big population, instead of a census, we look to the other type of information that you can gather, and that is using a sample. So a sample simply involves collecting data about a part of the, of the target population. So you're just going to be using a part of the target population for a sample. Okay. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you use a sample, that means you haven't asked every single person. So do you think you've gotten every answer that's possible? No. Maybe not. Okay. So... Conclusions based on samples always involve some error, so we have to think of as about a sample as simply estimating what's happening. So with a sample, you can really only get an estimate of what's happening in the population. Okay. So if we're just going to get an estimate, we want to do we want to get it the best possible estimate. So. As we heard just a moment ago, you want to make sure that your sample is taken very carefully. And the first thing we want to talk about is just this word, unbiased or biased. Okay? Right? And then we'll come back to the other one. If something is biased, if someone is, is biased, what happens is, they already have an opinion about something, and, you, and so they're not going to give you. An, they're not. They're going to give you the answer they want to give you. For example, if I asked everybody in this room what their favorite color is, but I had already told you that if you don't select blue, then you're not going to get credits. What are you all going to select? Blue. You at? Green. Yeah, well, no. 
That's true, some of you. But do you see what I mean? So there would be a bias toward blue because you know you're going to be rewarded for saying blue, right? Okay. If I wanted to know how many people in New Zealand ask, love ice cream, would I go to an ice cream parlor and ask the people in there? No, because the people who like ice cream are going to be, the people in the par- ice cream parlor are going to be people who like ice cream, right? If you go to, if I'm going to ask people who, uh, what their favorite pet is, am I going to go to a dog show for that? No, because no, people who like, they go to dog shows are going to be people who like dogs, right? So you see what it is about bias. So bias means that there's, um, so for bias, let's just call, all right. So bias is simply having, is meaning that they're not reliable as a sample. They're not representative of everyone in the sample or in the population. Mm-hmm. Is it like if someone would, if you're playing like a program? Okay. The second way that you can make a sample unbiased and, is, and is as good a sample of the population as possible is to make it sufficiently large. Because the larger your sample is, the more likely it is to represent the population, okay? And sufficiently large will depend on the question that you're asking. If I was gonna ask, every, if I was gonna ask about students at Queen Margaret, 800 people or so, then I could probably pick 100 people and that would be plenty, right? As long as I got, got them from every grade level and all the, all the classes, right? Now, but if I was going to ask a question about everybody in New Zealand, but I only asked 100 people, no, no that's not sufficiently large, right? So the bigger the, the bigger the overall population is, the bigger your sample needs to be, okay? Ellen wanted to know the mean height, mean meaning average height, right? The mean height of year eight students at her school. She measured the students in her year eight class and obtained these results in centimeters. So here are the results she got. Use this sample to estimate the mean height of students at the school. How could you use this sample to estimate the mean height? What would you do? How do you find the mean? No, mean. You do the sum, well, hold on a minute. We'll get to that question. The sum of them over the number of them, right? Okay, so we could do that. That's what they did here. And they got the sum, and they said the mean is 156 centimeters, yes? Mm-hmm. But do you think this estimate is going to be accurate for the, for the question that she's asking? Yes. No, no why not? Because um, she only measured the year eights instead of the whole school, so the mean that she made, the, the average that she calculated was the average for year eight. There you go, because she only asked year eights, so are there pe- the other grades where people might be not as tall as your eights? Or taller. Yeah. And are there the grades where people are going to be much taller? Yes. So it's a terrible sample. She couldn't just use your eights if she wants a sample, a representative sample of the entire school. All right. So, so year eight students, oh, sorry, so we were, so she wanted the heights of year eight students. Well, that's all right then. So it's not the year eight limitation, but she only looked at the students in her class. Right? But is it a lot of students? Yeah. yeah? How big? Do you, well, it depend, so it would depend on how many year eight students at her school, right? If she, had a, if she had a small number of year eights, then that might be a good sample. If she doesn't, then not so much. Okay? Yeah, really tall. 156 centimeters. All right. So th- this one is a reasonable size. So there's really no, and, and nobody's going to lie about their height if you're, if, because she said she's measuring it, right? What if she was just asking them? So people could, people could give a false answer, right? So her process was good and her sample size was good because she was just doing year eight. Sorry about that, guys. Okay? All right. So what we're going to do is you're going to answer some questions where you're going to have to find mean, median, and mode. And then you're going you're gonna, to you're also talk about whether you would be more appropriate to do a census or a sample. Think about what we talked about. Then you're going to look at some things and then see if there's bias in these samples that they give you. You're going to use this information to answer some questions, etc. Okay? So...
Stop the recording and you're gonna go to your snowflake and work on these.